Are you ready to unlock your true potential with deadlifting while keeping your spine safe? In today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into mastering deadlift technique, both with conventional and with sumo technique, while giving you three essential tips to keep your spine safe while you master as much strength as you can get out of this lift. Whether you're a seasoned lifter or just starting off, you're going to get a lot out of this video. Let's dive in. Get up and get down, get up. Tip number one for maximizing your deadlift technique potential and keeping your spine safe is how to brace properly and create sufficient core stiffness. Now, when a lot of people think about stabilizing their spine when they lift, they're either gonna take a big breath and push their stomach out, or maybe they've heard a physical therapist say, draw your belly button in, pull in. Both of those are not optimal. Here's how you're actually going to create sufficient core stiffness. Pull your shirt up, Micah. What I'm gonna do is stick my fingers into his lateral side and he's going to brace in a way that pushes my fingers laterally. Now, it's not as much of a forward expansion as it is a side lateral expansion. So when he does that and then braces as hard as he can, like someone's about to punch him in the stomach, that creates sufficient stability in a 360 degree manner that stabilizes the entire spine. So you can put your shirt down. What we're gonna do right here is show you the exact sequence for how to brace whenever you're deadlifting. So at first, you're gonna take a little bit of that stiffness in at the start in your top position. Then you will get down to the barbell, and as he grabs the bar, he's then going to take a big breath into his stomach, brace once more, and then go into his lift. Very good. You want to create a ton of tension in your bottom position before you ever start your lift. That's how you maximize your technique potential by giving yourself more power into your legs. You need to stiffen this first. A lot of people may not recognize, how do I brace on the way down? This is particularly helpful for people that may be cycling between multiple reps of deadlifts or doing a touch and go deadlift. What I want you to do is treat the deadlift descent like a lift in itself. So you will start up top, a little bit of tightness, get down. He's going to take one more breath, brace again and stand up. Now, before he drops down, he's gonna take another breath, brace again, and then descend, tap the ground, and come back up. So he's not going to let his breath out if he's doing a touch and go until he gets back up again. So the top down is a lift in itself. You wanna make sure that you are sufficiently stable before you let the bar down. If not, you let your breath out as you descend down. There can be a lot of force transferred to the passive tissues of your spine, which over time could increase risk of injury. So proper breathing and bracing is tip number one. Let's keep on going. Tip number two is going to be how you optimize your lats, these big muscles on the back side of your body to keep your spine safe and also create a ton of stability to help you lift more weight. Now, here's a drill that I first learned from elite powerlifter Chris Bridgeford. We're gonna take a band, a light band, and put it across your shoulders. Now, one of the things that the lats do is they help depress and extend the arms back to create the stiffness within the trunk. So what Mike is gonna do is having this light band across his shoulders and down across his hands, what he's going to do is push the bands down to try and create this really long arm situation. Because one of the things that you don't wanna do as a deadlifter, no matter if it's conventional or sumo, you don't wanna muscle the weight up with your arm. Your arms are basically long hooks. So this is going to help you keep your arms long and depressed. And I'm gonna have Mike face this way. If he, so bring your shoulders up, push the bands down. You can see what happens to his shoulder blades. Do that one more time for me. Shoulders are up here, push down with the bands. You can see how everything pulls down. This is what you wanna to do to lock in your lats and your body right here so that you're creating the stiffness in your trunk to get the most out of your deadlift. You don't wanna have a muscled position. So this teaches you that long arm lat lock in position for the conventional deadlift. So let's try that and see what that looks like. So again, as he gets set up, he's still bracing like we talked about in the first tip of the day. He's going to get those arms long as he reaches down. Now, as he gets down there before he sets up, I'm also gonna have him sort of lift his upper back to again, elongate those bands too. So he's pushing down and then get down into your start position. Very good. And then you would perform the deadlift right there. So you can see all those bands stay nice and long the whole time. That's how you lock in 
the lats, but then also lift the sternum just a little bit to elongate them up here to be in a proper deadlift position with your upper back as well. Excellent. Okay, now let's go directly into how would you engage those lats properly if you're a sumo lifter. As he gets set up, he needs to be able to pull back with his arms to engage the lats so that that bar doesn't drift away from him. He doesn't want to conventionally deadlift a sumo technique, so he doesn't want to fall forward. So one thing we can do is we can take this band and pull just slightly this way. So I have a light band pulling this way. Now enough that it's going to pull just slightly in the bar. It's not going to roll it away like crazy, but as he gets set up for his lift, I'm going to apply a little bit of tension He's going to slowly perform his lift. And in doing so, in order for that bar not to drift away, his lats have to be locked in to keep the arms extended and glued to his side. So this is an excellent way to teach proper deadlift mechanics, especially for the sumo lift, so that that bar doesn't drift away. You keep the bar nice and close for an efficient pull. All right, guys, our last tip for the day to maximize your deadlift potential, no matter if you're doing conventional or sumo and keep your spine safe, is to understand how to use leg drive. A lot of people think a deadlift is just a lot of back when actually it's just as much push into the ground. So a lot of people will use cues like push the earth away or think about the leg press action that you're creating when you deadlift. So we're gonna see what that looks like right now. So with a conventional deadlift, a thing that you can do to really help maximize this leg drive is take the slack out of the bar. So you're gonna pull up slightly. And then once you get everything locked in with your brace, lock your lats in like we did with step one and step two, you're going to then push really hard with your legs as you stand up. A one inch pause and then drive. So when he's doing this, he's got that lifting action like we did with taking the slack out of the bar. Feels everything tightening up from here to here, but then he is lifting with his hips, lifting with his legs. He's not as much pulling with his upper body as he is driving the earth away, and his hips are the fulcrum. Set, drive. Excellent right there. If you get done with the deadlift and you feel isolated low back fatigue right here, that shows me that you have failed to do those different steps. You have not had sufficient core st stiffness, you've not locked your lats in a lot, and you sure have not used leg drive, but you've been lifting too much with your low back. So you should get done with a deadlift in a heavy deadlift cycle. Feel your lats, feel your abs, feel your legs. Isolated low back fatigue shows that you have not done those other steps correctly and you are moving too much here. So let's see this one more time, but with sumo, see what that looks like. Now, one of the tips that I think Micah does so well with the sumo deadlift technique is to show how much the arms are only hooks that connect to the bar, and then the rest of the lift is basically leg drive. So let's see what that looks like. He's gonna get locked in. Tons of tension developed in the legs as he sits down, like a spring winding up getting ready to go. He's gonna grab the bar like long hooks. He's not pulling back with his elbows. He's locking in his lats. He's taking that big breath and brace. Everything is tight. And then the legs drive the weight up. That's how you perform a correct sumo deadlift by using every single one of those steps that we talked about today. So guys, I hope you now understand how to perform a deadlift, whether that's a conventional or a sumo technique with awesome technique and keeping your spine safe. This is how, no matter if you're an elite lifter or you're just getting started, you can deadlift big weight well for the rest of your life. Hope you guys liked today's video. Thank you to Micah for being my model today. Till next time, guys. Happy deadlifting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos? These people have